My name is JT Petty. I'm the writer of the Outlast video games. Outlast Trials is about you basically you're you're somebody who gets picked up off of the street. You're somebody who's who can be vanished because you're you're judged as being worthless by society. Um, you know, if you're 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 a drug addict or a mental patient or, or anybody that, that that the government wouldn't mind vanishing in 1960, you wake up in a facility where you're basically being forced to take part in experiments. A lot of the mystery of the story is about trying to figure out what what this experiment is supposed to do to you. I mean, so we wanted to set this one back in 1959 because I, I think the mystery of the origins of Murkoff have always been something that, that's just been a really interesting thing to want to explore. I also feel like 1960 is such a prime time politically in terms of secret decisions that really shaped the way the next century is going to go. The Outlast Trials takes place before any of the other Outlast games. And so we'd be able to explore things that happened before Outlast 1 that maybe you are interested about the backstory of or seeing some characters maybe learning about their history before any of the events of the other Outlast games. And it draws a lot of inspiration to experiments that were actually done in Montreal on people, on their brains, on their behaviors. It's lore to us, but it's real history to real people. It's been a huge inspiration and it's a story that hasn't ever really been told in video games to my knowledge, so I'm um, really excited about it. Hi, my name is Carl Schneira. I'm a psychiatrist. This is the Allen Memorial Institute. It's a great training center, but it's also where Dr. Cameron's experiments occurred, uh, linked with MKUltra. MKUltra was a large secret operation by the CIA that ran from 1953 to 1973. That was in the early days of the CIA. Their basic aim was to find ways to modify behaviors. The director of the hospital, this famous psychiatrist, Dr. Donald Ewan Cameron, was experimenting on, on patients. He claimed he could remove certain unhealthy patterns in the mind of patients and replace it with healthier patterns. So that uh, intrigued the CIA. They first uh, funded all kind of research that was going on. So things like mild altering drugs, things like how to implant a device in the brain and remotely control somebody. So there was research going on, but uh, they only went so far. What they did that was much more unethical, they became rather obsessed with uh, LSD and they did all kinds of weird experiments with it. They hired prostitutes to slip LSD to clients unknowingly, and then they would observe whatever occurred. They even would give LSD to CIA employees uh, without their knowledge, just to observe what it does. Uh, so that's really dangerous. I mean, today, it absolutely sounds like it's a conspiracy theories, but it actually happened. You can imagine that having things like sleeper agents, controlled assassins, you know, would be kind of the perfect spies. A sleeper agent, uh, in theory, is an agent uh, spy that doesn't know that he's a spy, that he can be activated from a distance. So in my opinion, if the CIA, or if anybody really could crack mind control, they would have the most devastating weapon in human history, more than nuclear weapons. Get back! <laughs> Fans can expect on from trials uh, is is more suffering, I guess. 